Hey guys, welcome to the live by IntelliPath. I am Ram and I'll be the one covering the live today. So guys, today we'll be learning how to start coding. So if you're a fresher or if you're someone who's just interested in getting into coding, then this live is for you. All right, so in this session, you know, uh, we'll basically be discussing a lot of different topics that will pertain to how you can start with coding. All right, guys, now we always do this for our YouTube regulars, but if you're new here, please stick till the end because there is a surprise for you. All right, so now let's take a quick look at our agenda. So in our session today, we'll be discussing different topics and these are the different topics. First, why learn coding? Then we'll move on to how you can start coding for yourself. How will you start it? Then third, we'll discuss which languages should you start with? Which language should you choose? Then we'll discuss how you can choose a project. We'll discuss what this particular topic is. And then we'll discuss the learning path. What is the learning path you should take? And finally, we will conclude by discussing what are the different kinds of jobs you can get in this particular field. So guys, let's go ahead and start the session. So our first question here is, our first discussion topic, why learn coding? So this is the question for you as well as me. Why should you learn coding? And do you really want to learn it? So let's actually discuss a story. So we have a person and this person wants to earn a very high salary. They don't know what they want to do in life, but they just know they want to learn. They want to earn a very high salary. So they decide to become a software engineer or software developer because they heard that it pays a lot. Then there is a person who's just interested in coding and in developing, in programming. So they take up this particular field of coding, programming, just because they're interested in this field. And then there's this third person. He, is, he has already been working in a particular field. Suppose he's a business analyst. Now he's been working since the 90s or the 80s. And during that time, they didn't use any such you know special algorithms to think about the data and make powerful decisions. But these days the market has to change and he has to adapt with the market to incorporate coding into his own, you know, working culture so that he can make better decisions based on the data that is being collected. You know how data science works, right? So all these three people have the same goal in mind. They want to become better at coding. They want to become coders or programmers. They want to become programmers. At least they want to learn what coding is or how to work with coding. So these can be a few of the reasons why you would want to become a coder. Maybe you want to get a really high paying job. Maybe you're just interested in coding. Maybe you're just, you know, learning coding to adapt with the change, you know, with the market, adapt to the market, adapt to the change that's happening to the market. So you should ask yourself, why do you want to learn coding? Now, this is important. You should ask this question to yourself because, you know, if you don't have the motive of your learning in mind properly, then you will, you know, fall off the horse. You, once you start learning coding, if you see, you know, come across an error, then you, if you're not able to solve that error, then you'll, you know, you'll stop doing it because you don't have any proper motivation. So make sure that you have a proper motivation in your mind when you start off by learning what coding is. So ask yourself this question. Why do you want to learn coding? All right, guys, now let's discuss how you can start coding by yourself. Okay, so you can start coding off, you know, basically by figuring out what you want to do. All right, so let's discuss this. So now you've asked yourself that, you know, what, what is your motive to be, um, become a coder? What is your, why do you want to program? Now you have to go ahead with the next step that is to learn how to start coding. So coding, you know, this is a very generic term, how to start coding. It's a very vast field. You know, computer science is a very vast field. There are so many different fields you can get into. So you have to narrow it down. So, you know, this is like problem solving. You have a very big problem. You divide into smaller parts and then solve it. So similarly with this question of how to start coding, you need to divide it into a smaller component. So with the question how to start coding, you should first go ahead and narrow it down to where do you want to code or how do you want to code. So first you need to figure out what do you want to do with coding? Do you want to develop an application? Do you want to make a bot? Do you want to develop a website? 
What kind of thing do you want to do? So once you've figured that out, you should go ahead and learn what are the languages and the tools that are required for the particular thing. Let me give you an example like a, of the person who is just interested in coding, but he's not, ne he's never gotten into coding. He's just heard about how hacking is so cool and he wants to get into coding. So he starts off by first dis deciding what kind of project he wants to do. So he wants to do a project where he's going to be making a recommendation system on a website. But the thing is this recommendation system does not use any powerful algorithms or something. It's just for him to share a few details with his family because the family lives far apart. So he just wants to share a few details with them. So to do that, he's just made this application. So see, it has a practical use, this particular project. And while doing this project, he's learning a lot of things. He's learning how to code a website. He's learning HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, database technology, a lot of different things. Now, this is how I recommend you should go ahead with it too. You should first figure out what you want to do, then figure out what language and tool you need for it then learn the basics of that language. Like, you know, all the different basics of a particular language, you should learn that and then move ahead and make the application. Now, a few, you know, a disclaimer here, when you're going to make this application, make sure that the application you're making is a very simple one. Because when you start off, always start with baby steps. Because if you start with something gigantic, if you want to make like the whole Facebook website, then you'll obviously fall off the first step itself because you don't know where to start from. So if you're rather making such a huge website, what you can do is you can just you know start by creating a small website where you basically can create accounts and you know post statuses. That's it. So this is how you I suggest you guys should start off by you know just start coding. All right, so first that is figure out what you want to do. So let me give you an example. So you can do a lot of things. You can make a small game. So if you're into gaming and you want to make a, you know, a particular small, you know, you want to get into the gaming industry, you want to become a game developer, then you should start off by making a very small game, you know, app. Not an apps per se, like a particular, uh, like a snake ladder, uh, you know, snake game, the one we had on our Nokia mobiles, like that, th that sort of a game. Or very simple one, like, you know, um, the uh, you know the defender, the defender game where you're basically shooting aliens from you know below, and if you're not that, then you can go ahead and make a web application or a mobile application, a very simple one per se. You know, like uh, you know very small things. In mobile app, if you're gonna make a mobile app, I would recommend not going for a mobile app right now. But if you're really interested in making a mobile app, then you can go ahead and make a very simple app that just opens up and tells you what the time is. So that way. So then this way, first figure out what you really want to do as a project, then figure out what are the languages and tools you can use. So there are a lot of languages out there that you can use. Like, let me give you that you have Python, C++, JavaScript, and you have similarly tools with them that you know, that you have to use with them. You can use your IDEs that are integrated development environments, you know, basically where you write the code, and you need compilers and all those tools. So figure out what do you need with all of this. So to give you a better idea, let's take an example of, you know, you want to make a web application. So you've decided that you're going to be making that web application where you're basically going to be displaying time of all the family members that are living across the globe. And then you decide to choose a particular language. You go ahead using JavaScript because, you know, that is what's used to create the front end. You use JavaScript, HTML, CSS to make the front end. And then you decide to use a particular tool. Maybe you're using Visual Studio Code as the place where you write the JavaScript code. So that is the tool you're using. Then you learn the basics of that language. Now, JavaScript will have a lot of different basics, but it has some coding basics also. Like, you know, you have your loops, like for loops, while loops, then you have if statements, then you have variables, then you have functions and arrays. So these are like a kind of the basics of the particular language. Not just the language, these are fundamentals of any language. When you're working with any language, you'll have loops, if statements, variables, and functions and arrays. And similarly, you know, that example of, you know, making that website, you're learning JavaScript, so you'll have to learn these, and then you have to learn the basics of the language itself. You'll have to learn a little bit of HTML, a little bit of CSS, a little bit of JavaScript. And once you learn all of those, you know, uh, the fundamentals of all of those things, then you can go ahead and create the application that you want to. Now, and then, 
create a basic application. So now, you know, he's, he knows what he wants to create and he's creating it then. So the process of creation, when he's creating the web application, he'll be learning a lot of things. He'll be learning how to create functions in JavaScript. He'll be learning how to place a certain things using CSS, how to color them, how to make it more fancy looking, and how to, you know, uh, divide the content using HTML. So a lot of different things you'll be learning when you're creating this application. Now remember, a very important factor here is that you should not go for something that is complicated. You should go for something that is very simple. If you go for very simple, then, you know, yeah, in the starting it feels like, oh, I'm not doing anything, but you're actually learning. So if you complete this application, right, then you should give yourself a pat on the back because you've done something amazing. You started from not knowing anything in coding to create a basic application. Yeah, that's a good step. Once you've learned this, then you should go ahead for different other applications. Like once you completed your first project, do a second project. This time when you're doing a second project, make sure that it's a little bit more complicated. Again, not so complicated as making a whole Facebook website. Make it a little bit more complicated so that you know you can work with it and learn new things with it. So, you know, the whole cycle repeats. You define an aim again. You choose the particular language. Well, you've already chosen the language. You choose what are the libraries you're going to use, all the different tools you're going to use, and you're going to learn how to use them. So this way, slowly, slowly doing projects, you'll learn how to become a coder. So guys, that is how you're going to start coding. All right, so let me just brief, you know, briefly tell you like how you should choose what kind of language, what kind of tools you need to use. So all those things, let me just brief you on that. So when it comes to which language should you choose, not just for working with your project, maybe you're thinking, okay, so I've understood this guy's way, but I just want to start with a language. I've heard of all these different languages, C++, Java, Python. So which language should I choose, you know? So that really depends because there are a lot of different factors here. So you have a lot of languages out there. You have Python, Kotlin, C++, C Sharp, JavaScript, Swift, Java, Ruby, PHP, Node.js, R. There are so many different languages for so many different use cases. So again, you would have to define an aim for yourself, a, define a particular project for yourself so that you, know, you can um, learn those, all these tools and languages on the journey there because if you have a name you won't falter you won't you know if you have an error you will try to solve it you will try to solve it because you have an aim and you want to accomplish that aim so that's why so choosing a language well i would actually recommend you guys start off with python itself well python and javascript are pretty easy to start off with but personally i would recommend python because python is one of the most easiest languages out there now, it's very easy to learn. Like the learning curve is not very steep. It's a very gradual curve. So you can learn easily with Python. It's got very simple syntax. You know, you know, you don't have to type complicated syntax for it. You can, you have a lot of different tutorials and guides out there. We ourselves in Telepath have a very long lecture that gives you everything you need to know about Python. So right now you can open up another tab and type in Python in Telepath and you'll find a very good video that will explain to you how you can start coding with Python. And if you're especially a fresher who doesn't know what he wants to do, then you should definitely check this out because it will give you an idea about coding itself and you'll be getting python now remember i said that python is simple now it's simple doesn't mean it's bad python has so many different use cases i can't even list them down right now a few of them might be software development you know data science and creating bots writing scripts there are so many things you can do with python and Python is very powerful. A lot of different enterprises make use of Python for their particular applications and whatever they're working with, you know, the projects, they use Python. Python is a very important language. So I suggest you guys to start off with Python. You know, if you want to learn Python, you can start off by, you know, looking at the different tutorials, different guides. And if you think you need a, you know, certification in Python, because maybe you don't have a CS degree, you did not pass out with, you know, CS, or you don't have a degree yet, then you should definitely get certified as a Python developer. And we provide the same also. Again, there's a uh, minus asterisk over here. If you have other languages that you've already worked on, suppose this is a different use case, like this is a, for the case of a person 
who has done some work in C++, but he want, and he stopped coding for some time because he thought that this is not what he wanted to get into. But later he realized his passion again when he started playing games again. So he wants to get back into coding, the whole game. Then that in that way, then you should not start off with Python. Maybe you should start off with C++ itself or whatever language you've worked with because then you already have a basic understanding and uh, you've already had the basic understanding, then you can go ahead with the advanced topics also. Again, choosing a language can be difficult in another way also because you have a lot of different things like uh, to take in factor, like what kind of project you're building. So I told you guys, if you want to start off with just a language, you start with Python. But if you want to start off with a particular project, suppose you're making an iOS app, then you should definitely you know, use Swift. Swift uh, is, uh, as you can see, this is Swift. Instead of you know using JavaScript, you can't use it, so you need to use Swift. Or if you're working with Android, then you need to work with Java and Kotlin. Or if you're working with any websites, then you need to know, uh, again, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, Node.js, PHP, Django, all these different kinds of languages. Or if you want to become a data scientist, then you have to work with Python again, and then either R or MATLAB also. You can work with any three of these. And then software development, if you want to be, get into software development, C Sharp and Java are a good choice. And then game development, if you're really into you know creating games, then you can start off by learning C++ and C Sharp. So again, the guys, there are two, a lot of factors here deciding what kind of language you want to choose. I suggest Python because the Python is really easy to do, you know, use, and it has a lot of use cases. It has really powerful algorithms that you can use and a lot of powerful libraries that you can make use of. All right guys, so other than languages, what, what kind of tools can you use? So, you know, debugging. So what is debugging? So if once you start coding, right, you will find a lot of errors in your code. Like maybe you made a, you know, a page of code and it basically tells you the time. And right now it's not working. In the compiler, you're getting a particular error. You're getting an error that this particular thing is missing. So how do you check that out? Because in a starting, you'll be working by yourself because you're learning the basics. So you can make use of Google. Google is one of the best tools out there. Search that error. Whatever error you get, search it. If you search it, you'll find that there are other people out there who have made similar mistakes with, like, uh, you know, like you've made. That's why I wouldn't recommend ever starting with a book because with a book, you are narrowed down and you can't ask anyone for help. So learning online is like a really good opportunity. So use Google in your debugging. So debugging would be basically removing that bug. That is the error and you Google it and you'll find a lot of different sources that will tell you how you can solve your error. And this is where Stack Overflow comes in. Now Stack Overflow is, is something you're gonna be hearing a lot of times. Like Stack Overflow is very important if you're getting into coding. So remember, Stack Overflow is basically a place, it's like Quora, but it's for like technical stuff. You ask questions and people will try to answer back with, you know, uh, people who are, suppose you're answering a question in Python, then a person who is really, you know, um, good at Python will try to answer a question. Now Stack Overflow has a really good community, but we in Telepath also have a really good community. If you go ahead and ask a question, then we will also, there'll be people in our community that will try to answer these questions also. So this is how you can, you know, solve your debugging and try debugging. And these are your debugging tools. And then you have version control systems. Now remember guys, if you're working, uh, on software development, right? Then you'll definitely be using, working, you know, writing code. You'll be coding. So where will you write, you know, store this code? So if I wanted to give you a brief uh, explanation of what Git is, Git is basically a place where you store your code. And why I wrote version control system here is because, so when you're writing, your, like let's take an example. If you have a project, right? Your project might have different, like your first iteration of a project. You've made your project and it works really fine. But now you want to add more features to it. So once you start adding more features to it, you create a new version of your project. It's like having different versions of an app. You'll have uh, application version one, application version two, application version three. Now for codes of all of those threes will be stored separately. And that's how you, that's why, like that's a basic ex explanation of what Git will be doing for you. So if you're confused right now, don't worry, just Git, just learn how to use Git. Git is very important for any coder out there. And know that it basically is used for storing your code. Then you have your integrated development environments. So you have IntelliJ, Visual Studio, and Android Studio. All of these different studios are basically places where you write the code. Now you're writing the code in them and you're making use of the functionality they give you. Now suppose you're writing your code in one of these IDEs, integrated development environments, and you want to use a piece of code that is very long 
and you don't want to write it from the scratch. So you can just use the libraries that it provides you or any plugins separately. So just remember that ID is a place where you're going to be writing a code and using a lot of its functionalities from here and there. So guys, these are the different tools you'll need to know and choose, you know, basically choose the tool based on the language, like, or choose any integrated, like, there are different integrated development environments out there. You have a Visual Studio Code that can be used for different languages also, but it's mainly used for C Sharp, C++, Visual Basic, and etc. And if you want to work with Python, you have your integrated development you know, environment like uh, Idle or PyCharm, etc. All right, guys, now how do you choose, go ahead and choose a project? Now, choosing a project is as important as completing the project itself, because you're going to be, you know, uh, using this as your main objective, your main goal. It's like, you know, uh, suppose you're taking a, you're going to be making a bot. You're going to be making a bot that posts questions on Facebook for you. So that is your project. That is your main goal. And make sure that you keep it a very simple one. Again, a disclaimer, guys. So if you're going, going to be starting to code, make sure that the project you're choosing is a very simple project. Even though it's simple, it still sets a goal for you, right? And now you know that you're going to be starting off simple and you're going to be choosing a project. So how do you choose a project? So guys, choosing off a project, you know, the first thing you should do is make sure that it's simple, okay? And the next thing, ask yourself a question. Ask yourself, what are you interested in? Suppose you sitting there view right now are very interested in cricket and you want to get into coding. So what you can do is you can basically create a website or you can create a website that basically lists down all the famous cricketers out there, Sachin or Adam Gilchrist, Sir Viv Richards. You can, you know, basically list, you can create, this can be your project where you're writing, you know, listing down all the different greatest players out there on your website. So that can be a project. So ask yourself, what are you interested in? It can't just be cricket, it can be a lot of different things and make a project based on that. Or you, if you if you want, you can do this also. You can basically check out, uh, ask, you know, um, see if your family is having issues, ask them uh, and make sure that it's a little bit simple or ask them what issues they're facing. Suppose uh, they're not able to contact you properly. Uh, I know we have WhatsApp these days, but just imagine we didn't have WhatsApp and they want to contact you with you. Uh, they want to maintain contact with you. So you can make a very simple messaging or very basic email application where you're you know, sending mail to them, they're receiving, they're sending it back to you. A similar use case, try to think of an idea that you like or do you, ha you, have, you want to do it passionately and choose that as your project. Now again, you, once you've decided what you want to do, you, that particular thing will fall into a domain. Now I said that you could be creating a website. Now website will fall into a domain of web development. So there are multiple different web uh, domains. So let's discuss them. So you have web development. Web development, you can see all the different languages you'll be choosing like your JavaScript, HTML, CSS, Node.js, PHP, Django, etc. And you guys see, if you notice, Django is basically used for writing the backend, and it, again, is based on Python. So you see how important Python is. Then you have a different domain like Android, we're using Java and Kotlin, then you're using iOS, Swift, and for data science and data engineering, you have Python, R, MATLAB, software development, Java, C Sharp, Python again, game development, C++, C Sharp. So you have so many different domains you can choose from. Choose the one that you're interested in. And try to find that, and try to find something that has a use. All right, guys. So I've told you how you can start coding, you know? Now let's see the learning path for a coder. So as a, you know, in learning path, you'll be, you know, do, so first of all, what you should do is, you should make sure that you're learning online because uh, you can learn in classes also, but online is just much more easier. You have your own self pace and you can do it by yourself. So I recommend trying and going out, uh, you know, those websites out there like Free Code Camp that provide, you know, help you in coding. They basically you know, give you small tutorials where you learn the basics of coding. Or if you want, if you want to be instructed by someone, if you want to be, uh, you know, taught by someone who has had a years of experience in a particular language, then you can get online courses. Now we here at IntelliPath provide a lot of different courses. And if you're choosing a language, like suppose you're choosing Python, you have a lot of things you can do. You have the Python certification training. 
so basically you will be taught by you know different uh, by people who are well versed in python who been working with python for years in the industry they have a lot of experience so if you have any doubt they will be able to answer it without any hesitation or at least they will try to so guys get certified you know certification can help you a lot especially if you don't have a cs degree or if you don't have a degree if you don't have a degree at all it's okay doesn't matter just get try to get a certification and build your skills build your skills add projects to your resumes do all of those things they will greatly help you out and if you are a person who does not have uh, any you know any any degree that is relevant like if you don't have a cs degree or an ec degree then again that is also fine coding is something that is easy to start with you can easily start it off and get into it really easily also all right guys so let's move back <clears throat> All right, guys. So in your learning path, you should start up by learning the basics of the coding. You've chosen a field already. You know your domain, the project, the tools, the language you'll be working with. Then go ahead and learn all the basics. Learning the basics should take you about a month. I mean, if you're a very, if you're a, you know starting from beginning, you know nothing about coding. You're starting off from scratch. Even then, it will just take you a month to learn all the basics, all the fundamentals of coding out there. Especially if you're you know working with Python. from there on learning the advanced topics may take up to a few months and mastering them even may take up to a year now have you heard of any skill that you know you can complete and learn so easily so fast well coding is that particular field you can learn the basics very fast you can master the you know advanced elements also pretty fast etc so you know what for learning path what you can do is you can either get certified from uh, any of the companies out there like in telepath we provide you certification where people help you out you know you have your online instructors or what you can do is you can basically uh, check out our blogs our channels if you you know look up our youtube channel we have a very good uh, courses that we give out for free like uh, they don't have projects with them and you know nobody teaches you like no trainer will be able to answer your doubts but they're still really good and professionally made and they'll help you start off they'll give you a you know platform to start off so you guys can go and check them or if you want you can check out our blogs also and remember guys if you have any doubts that you're not able to answer then you can go ahead and type them in our community so if you can just type in telepath/community and as you can see you can easily just log in and register and then go ahead and ask a question if you're having any quite you know doubts so guys that was it for learning path you know you basically got in to know how you can start coding so use the knowledge i've given you okay all right so the last thing we're going to discuss is what kind of jobs can you expect now you've got an into coding you at least got an idea and let's just give you the juicy part now what kind of jobs can you expect so there are different fields out there you have your cloud computing software development game development machine learning data science big data web development there are so many different domains out there for you to choose because you know you can use coding in all of these different fields obviously coding is not going to be the only thing you know you'll start off by coding you'll master the elements of coding then you will go ahead and specialize in few areas if you suppose let me give you an example if you you know going to cloud computing you learn the architecture of the cloud so that is again a knowledge you're getting if you're going to software development you know you'll have to uh utilize all the different uh, devops things and cloud a lot of different things you'll be using software development and game development is a you know a very new field also it started off recently and it also has a lot of opportunities it's going to be a little bit more different than all the other fields but it utilizes a lot of elements from the other fields as well as coding and then you have machine learning this is a very good, you know like a very big buzzword because machine learning is like a very sought after job a lot of people go ahead and learn you know get very good at machine learning and get paid really high salaries because you know machine learning is the future then you have data science you know where you're basically studying the data so you'll be making use of lot of other elements like mathematics and statistics but you'll be using coding also and again for data science you guys know python is very important python is important for so many things then you have big data 
where you'll be you know analyzing a lot of data coming in so and then you have web development so guys these are just a few domains that i've listed there are a lot more domains out there you can look for them yourselves because if your interest lies in a particular field then you can go and you know look at that particular field suppose uh, let me give you the cricket example again so you know uh, data data analysis happens in cricket also because you know you have to figure out uh, how long the player will last on the field how many runs will he make and how is the weather going to be so in even that kind of field you'll be using coding so look at the field you are interested in find a particular topic that you want to do like a project you want to do figure out what are the different uh, lang what is the language you need to learn what are the different tools you'll need and then go ahead and make that application a simple one all right guys as the quote says here an investment in knowledge always pays best interest that basically is saying you know you invest a little money or in little time in learning a particular thing uh, like coding and you know it'll pay off in the future it'll help you out a lot all right guys who are new here or even those regulars here we have a flat 30% off on all our courses you can use the coupon code u230 and get flat 30% off on all of our courses so guys go ahead get this limited youtube uh, coupon code and you know get your 30% off all right guys thanks for thank you for watching here are numbers listed and our contact details so if you want to talk to us you know if you want to decide your career and you're still kind of confused then go ahead and call us we give you free sessions on you know career counts we basically do career counseling also so guys thank you for watching and i'll leave you be until the next time